My name is James Sims. I think I was born with an addiction to TV and movies. You see, I grew up in Hollywood, well, the valley to be exact, and I'd often spend my days on movie sets. I became an entertainment reporter, Entertainment Tonight, The Hollywood Reporter. Now I'm in New York, so consider me bi, coastal. But even from Manhattan, I'm still in love with Hollywood glamour. Hey, hey, I'm James Sims, and welcome back to another webisode of Sofa Snark. Despite the presidential wunderkind, Barack Obama, interrupting my primetime mojo, we've got a lot to get through this week. Portia de Rossi's back on TV, as is Ian McShane. Balthazar Getty took a hike from brothers and sisters, and Lost has gone primal. It's all coming up right here on Sofa Snark. How do you like that, Ryan Seacrest? XOXO. Mwah. I do, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Okay, I can take a hint. Call me if you change your mind, alright? I will. I will. Congratulations. Thanks, man. It was nice meeting you. Bye. It was nice meeting you, Trip. You're gonna skip out on your family reunion? I appreciate the commitment to the game. No, listen, man, I'm not gonna go pretend to bond with the people who shut me and my mom out when my dad got busted. Let's kick it off with my favorite show. It was a snowy day in Gossip Girl land, but a quick glimpse back into Lily's younger years proved rather steamy. Trent Reznor, Slash, just a few of the 90s sex capades Serena's mom had. Could this be a hot setup for the upcoming Gigi spinoff? I think so. And what's this? Blair Waldorf has a Facebook page? That coupled with Jenny shopping on Bluefly, and you've got a media orgasm on the CW. With Nate all but tossing his low-class girlfriend to the curb and Blair pulling the stick out of her ass, it looks like Gossip Girl is only going to get hotter. And I can't wait. Holly Hunter gets naked yet again. TNT has started turning the heat up on Saving Grace. Things got pretty hippy-dippy this week as Grace investigated a murder at the house of a tantric guru. Another week of grade A character studies. Keep doing that who-do that you do, Holly. I was just seeing what small talk might look like. Oh, well, usually you... Please stop. I feel like I just pissed away my day. We have a problem. The food division just told me that the extra fun mac and cheese I'm supposed to be presenting to the shareholders causes blindness if eaten more than twice a week. Plus, no matter how long it's cooked, it never gets hot. Maybe it's not mac and cheese. Oh, no, it has to be. They've already designed the box. For all you Arrested Development fans, the uber-talented Portia de Rossi's back on the air in another tongue-in-cheek satire. This time, her character heads up a research company. Need a co-worker cryogenically frozen? How about a weaponized pumpkin? Or beef that's grown with no cow necessary? Viridian's the fictional company for you. Portia plays another cold-hearted stiff bitch, and it seems to work yet again. Let's see how things shape up over the next few episodes. After a season of wild storylines full of polygamy trials, child abductions, and teenage pregnancy, Big Love came to an end Sunday. How am I supposed to get my Mormon love on every week now? Well, Bill Paxton's character, Bill, very creative guys, spent all season flip-flopping more than Al Gore. He attacked his cult leader, father-in-law, then got in bed with the same devil. Nikki found herself on the fast track towards divorce. Then she winds up having pulled a Sophie's Choice back in the day. So Nikki has a long lost daughter. Hello next season. And hell broke out in the world of big love. And it ended with a little game of suffocation for Roman Grant. Oh yeah. Callista Flockhart was in the news last week after finally getting engaged to Harrison Ford. You lucky dog, you. She's a bit kooky, but who doesn't have a crush on Ally McBeal? And now everyone should have a crush on brothers and sisters. Why? Because Balthazar Getty's character finally split, at least for now. And his sidelined wife was more than happy to be rid of him. I don't blame you, sister. Looks like Kitty might be leaning towards a split from Rob Lowe's character. And uh-oh, that new bastard child Ryan's turning into a righteous prick. Don't mess with those walkers, bro. Maybe you defend him too well. Oh, don't you start lecturing me on class distinction and social hierarchy. You yourself are scandalously poor ones. I don't care about that. I wonder how he'd react if he knew about you. The story that I'd wager good money you haven't shared with him. I think he might surprise you. Are you gonna make me come out and say it? Have you forgotten your vow? NBC's biblical reimagining of Kings had its second episode Sunday. Ratings for the show are pretty dismal, but fans should try giving it another chance. Yeah, I don't really care for the God references. 
But anything with Ian McShane is worth a look. Deadwood, anyone? As the king, his royal ass seems pretty vengeful, setting his sights on an innocent young soldier. It's a bit complicated and often feels like a half-baked concept, I must admit, but it's too soon to rule this drama out. You got one more week to impress me, NBC. Brian Cranston went all Moses wandering through the desert on Breaking Bad. His trek was drug-related, although I still haven't ruled out that Moses' wasn't either. Anywho, was it really necessary to see his bare ass? Don't get me wrong, nudity is always a plus on TV, just not when it's by a middle-aged balding man. <laughs> Jesse found himself answering to the cops about his lowrider showing up in a shootout, and the cops clued me in on a new word of the day, schlongus interruptus. That's going right up here. Might things actually be getting interesting on Heroes? Well, there's no sexy gossip girl or alcoholic Holly Hunter, but there are a few superheroes with kick-ass powers. And what nerd doesn't like a mind-reading former cop or semi-sexy ice queen? Well, actually, both those are pretty lame. Why am I sticking with this show? Like David Duchovny on The X-Files might say, I want to believe. My favorite little hero, Daphne, popped back into the picture, but then was killed off, again. Damn it, NBC, I'm trying to like you, but you're making it hard. Peter flew into the picture to save his mastermind mama, then a puberty-struck Micah returned with his computer hacking ability. If this show gets back to the season one vibe, it might have a chance. What makes you think I want to? Because, Saeed, to put it simply, you're capable of things that most other men aren't. Every choice you've made in your life, whether it was to murder or to torture, it hasn't really been a choice at all, has it? It's in your nature. It's what you are. You're a killer, Saeed. That wacky Iraqi, Saeed, took center stage on Lost. Like the good Middle Easterner that he is, Saeed was born with an urge to torture racist storylines much? But this week he's the one being held captive thanks to the 1970s time warp. Sawyer sold his Iraqi friend down the river. Now that's some cold shit. But not as cold as the killer ending. Little Ben Lyons, well he's been a little creepy. But Saeed took care of that by blowing his freaking ass away. Amazing stuff! Lost is getting primal! Over on Grey's Anatomy, Izzy's circling the drain. See a doll? Christina's boy toy is getting homicidal on her ass. What the fuck? And Shepard's back in the saddle. And I couldn't give a hoot about any of them. As a military veteran myself, I have to give kudos to the writers for dealing with the PTSD syndrome. But if only that wasn't the only storyline left to care about. Is it bad that I wouldn't mind seeing Katherine Heigl's character killed off, like right now? That's gonna do it for this edition of Sofa Snark. I'm James Sims. Log on to simscoop.com for daily entertainment blogging and to catch the next webisode of Sofa Snark. Love ya, now go watch TV.